Hi everybody, so let's start this new meeting. Um, for the um, So we don't have a lot of topics to the agenda, um, but first, just a few things that I did last week. The first one was to upgrade Jira, so we had to renew the Jira license last week and now uh, we're running uh, the latest one. Um, this is something that we should do more systematically because it's quite easy to to upgrade to uh, the, to the same uh, version, I mean major version. But um, yeah, that's that. We basically we were affected by security issues, but now it's fixed. And otherwise, accepted that. Um, I think we can um, just look up for each um, topics. So the first one is uh, the IBM infrastructure. Um, Jim, do you want to? To explain yeah. a little bit here. Um, so I gave access to you and Mark uh, access to Z, uh, which I think you guys just got the other day, and power that you guys had for a couple of days so far. Um, hopefully, you guys can figure out adding SSH keys to the Z, as um, my colleague didn't do that. He just gave you a, a general uh, SSH key. Um, the major issue we're hitting. Uh, with it, um, I guess for you guys is using Puppet to manage the infrastructure. Uh, Puppet looks like they stopped supporting builds for uh, S390. Um, I think sometime in 2008, um, or sorry, not 2008, 2018. Um, and then I think they still support um, uh, power, but in a limited capacity, as it looks like it only applies to Ubuntu 1604 which does not help us since the image that you guys got for power uh, is Ubuntu 1804, um, which is lovely. Um, so I guess the discussion we need to have is how we're going to proceed with managing the configuration management basically on that machine. Um, I know briefly in the email, uh, you guys mentioned maybe wanting to use Ansible for it. Um, and to kind of address any of the concerns, Ansible does work fine on S390 and PPC, that's what we use to manage all our infrastructure over here, uh, but Puppet does not. So uh, how, how do you guys want to kind of proceed with that since we could port Puppet, but that will require a lot of additional work and might not be 100% sustainable in terms of like, if you guys need to update your main Puppet master, then it might fall out of sync. I don't really use Puppet that much, so I can't really s speak to all the ins and out, but I know that it will require uh, a good deal of work. Yeah, so the reason why I mentioned using Puppet was because we already have the Puppet code to configure the Jenkins mm -hmm. agents, but uh, in the end, the idea is just to um, simplify the management of those machines. Yes. So if Puppet is not correctly supported, um, I'm totally fine to use Ansible or any other um, tools. Um, the thing is, we just need to create a new Git repository, for example, if, if we decide to use Ansible um, for that. Okay. We just need to, to create a new Git repository with the Ansible code uh, used to, um, to configure those machines. So I think Mark is doing some testing right now um, with those uh, infrastructure. So I think we can... Because it does not, I mean, we don't have a lot of um, configuration for those uh, roles, so it should be really easy to put that in place. Um, but um, yeah, I'm just wondering if Mark, you are working on that. If you Mark, you're familiar with Ansible uh, or not at all. Because if I, you, I, I have no experience with Ansible whatsoever, and it shows because I config all my configuration I did with shell scripts. So so you're welcome to do whatever works best for Ansible, and I trust your your choices. Yeah, Olivia, so, absolutely. So, so yeah, I did a lot of Ansible code uh, several years in the past. Uh, so if you can at least work on a script, um, if you can at least work on a script that we can use, so we can first configure those machine, and then once I have some time, I will I will write the Ansible codes. So we can, if if it's needed, we can redeploy those machine in the future. We can re reconfigure those machine in the future. The main reason why I really think it's important to have configure as code for a virtual machine is because it allows other people to modify so let's say if they want to install a different gvm version of if they want to change a ssh key or whatever um it just easier in the future but yeah mm -hmm. because we don't have i mean because the script is not that big for those machines i think uh, as a first iteration we can already just configure the machines with the right ssh keys and uh, and then work on the, um, the ansible code later later on yeah i i 100 i'm all 
for configuration management. Uh, I, I definitely know the benefits and uh, I applaud you guys for even doing it because uh, it's, it's really awesome. And I, I think we'll sooner than later, we'll also see the issues with, um, we'll see the use case for uh, having this kind of Ansible code is, you know, the, the power of PPC server that yeah, we gave you guys, uh, that isn't the long-term solution. Uh, that's just a temporary server for you guys. Uh, and I think I have a talk on Friday of uh, going to legal to get that terms of sheet, uh, ter terms of use sheet for you guys for PPC. I have you guys sign off of that because you, you did sign off on the Linux one, uh, yes. but we'll need to have you guys sign off on the power one. Okay. Um, so th that'll be perfect if, if we develop some sort of Ansible playbooks and then we're able just to really, uh, snap of your fingers, uh, redeploy all the Ansible playbooks on this new server. That'd be amazing to see. Um, the other major, I don't know, is there any more we want to say on the whole puppet versus Ansible kind of thing? Um, okay. uh, the other, yeah, yeah go ahead. No, I would just, I, I think, uh, I, I, thought, I mean, I think that if, if Puppet is not correctly supported on those architecture, and then we don't have to, to waste our time. Um, yes, okay. So. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we have experience with uh, getting Puppet to kind of work. Uh, the, a couple of clients were interested in Puppet too, but the big, the big problem is the dependency kind of uh, hole you kind of go down into. Uh, Puppet is a colossal kind of machine. Uh, I'm not saying an Ansible isn't, but uh, it's it's we we looked at it and we, we we started working with it, but it requires to go to like pretty much every open source community under the sun and be like, hey, can you guys start producing S390 builds, please? Uh, which is my goal, but uh, I don't really have time to do that right now. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think I think not wasting our time and hopping into Ansible will be a good way to go. Okay. Um, so yeah. So once once you can share. So once once I can have access to a script, uh, let's say to install the OpenGDK nine or whatever. Uh, once I have access to a script, I can write those and skip Ansible code. Yeah, and we we might be able to. Uh, I don't know how good the Ansible scripts are. I haven't personally looked at them. Um, we might be able to actually use the DOPS um, OpenJDK's Ansible scripts because I think they have uh, to manage their infrastructure, their Jenkins infrastructure. Uh, they use Ansible to uh, reconfigure, you know, you know, workers and stuff like that. Uh, so they might actually have some Ansible playbooks and uh, roles that we might be able to utilize for installing the DOPS, uh, you know, doing all that good stuff. Yeah, that, that that would be. So can you can you have a look to this? Can you have a look to those? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can actually, I'll post a link uh, in this document. Uh, I think I actually have the tab open somewhere. I'll okay. do that after the meeting. Okay, um, perfect. The last thing uh, that, you know, uh, Mark Ressi was just talking on IRC about is uh, uh, the whole compilation on Z being a little slow. You, you Mark, you, Mark, you ran into that issue the other day, right? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. and I've I've got while you've been talking, I've been compiling and have seen evidence to support exactly what you said, Jim. Uh, so it, it looks like the the most compelling thing to use on Z is OpenJ9, mm -hmm. and it feels dramatically faster than either Adopt OpenJDK with Hotspot or the the JDK that's bundled with Ubuntu on Z. So. So it's mm -hmm. it's pretty simple in this case. Use OpenJ9. I'll run a yeah. bunch more r bunch more tests, but the execution performance is visibly and dramatically different using OpenJ9. Yeah, and there's actually an issue I can link you to on Adopt's uh, GitHub page where they kind of go over. I think someone actually ran into similar aspect of you. They were using uh, Open, uh, sorry, Adopt JDK, just plain hotspot. And with no JIT, uh, the JIT is just in time compiler. Um, and what's happening with, to explain the slowdown issue that you're experiencing is um, the Java 8 uh, from Oracle is not shipped with the JIT compiler. So what happens is everything's running in interpreter mode. Uh, so that it's it just a lot, a lot slower. I think it, it was solved and added into the source uh, Java 11 and up. Uh, so you could, you know, run just, you know, a, a open JDK from a Java, uh, Java 11 and up to get that JIT for S390. Um, but this is the exact problem, I guess, you know, originally came to you guys to solve 
is getting you guys, your Docker images, switching from OpenJDK to adopt OpenJDK because this is like all my Z friends and IBM coworkers, uh, when they go to compile your Docker um, repositories, uh, they spin up Jenkins, it works, but then it's just terribly sluggish and slow and it's like, it's not Jenkins, Jenkins is fine, it, it works very well. It's just the compiler underneath is just not right. It doesn't have the JIT. Uh, so that switch would really help solve uh, some of these issues that you kind of ran into. Well, well, so just to be clear, I didn't see visibly different performance from Adopt versus Oracle versus OpenJDK as bundled with Ubuntu. I don't know if that's Oracle's or not, but OpenJDK as bundled with Ubuntu on S390 feels, now I haven't done precise benchmarks, but mm -hmm. my perception was it's not dramatically faster. Whereas if I use OpenJ9, it mm -hmm. is dramatically faster. Now I yes, just yes. got some test failures that hint that OpenJ9 J9 may have, have things that need more investigation as well. But, but yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely not perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the, I know in the past people have ran issues uh, with the, the, the bundled uh, JDKs uh, that come with Canonical or even RHEL or stuff like that. Uh, the Docker official repo, someone raised an issue and hence why we don't see Alpine, or we don't see uh, other kind of base distributions in the Adopt official uh, image right now is because um, they were pulling from, originally they were pulling from uh, and also, I think Oracle, this is why uh, OpenJDK official image doesn't support S390 or any of the other ones anymore, is because they were pulling from canonicals or, you know, basically, you know, Ubuntu's built um, binaries, which uh, the official image team didn't feel comfortable with because they don't know 100% what canonical did change with it. So they want to basically keep propagating that out to all their users. Um, right. Yeah. But anyways, that, that is the problem you ran into. And I'm glad you kind of experienced, kind of see the difference uh, between those two. Um, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll be on the, the IRC to help you out with any other issues and get you up and running. Um, Great, okay. Okay, um, I, I, yeah, I think it would be nice to write a small blog post about this because I think it's an interesting um, scenarios for other people as well. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be really cool actually to see. Um, so next topic is Mark. Apparently you want to talk about the Seattle Jenkins that you upgrade. Yeah, so just I just need to schedule some of your time, Olivier, and I suspect tomorrow morning my time is the best hope. Are you available tomorrow morning? I'd like to have you tutor me through how do we do an upgrade of ci.jenkins.io from one LTS to the next LTS. Yes, so I'll, I'll do that. There is some run books uh, regarding this. I have to check, I have to find those. But uh, yeah, we can definitely do that tomorrow often, tomorrow morning, your time. Perfect, that's, that's all I needed for, was to just get your agreement that, yeah, you're willing to tutor me and Mark to invite. Um, I'm pretty sure that Daniel Beck wrote some something about that, uh, and it's in the search um, organization. I have to find a link. That's okay. I can. You don't need to do that. I can do that chasing happily. It's a good chance for me to explore. If I have failed in my exploration tomorrow morning, you can show me then. Okay, but on a, on a, uh, on a, usually when we decide to upgrade CI to Jenkins.io, it's either because there is a new uh, LTS available uh, for security reason, whatever. But regarding the plugins, it's usually like um, if you want to upgrade a plugin, just think, just think with Daniel, or if you know that uh, we need uh, we need CI to Jenkins.io for specific reason because we know that we want to test something or whatever, um, it's usually best to just ask um, if, you, if you can do it. But most of the time, um, if you know that you have enough time to fix um, issues, then just upgrade the system. I mean, uh, on, a, on a general basis, the Jenkins Infra project is more like a best effort. So if you have the time to fix something, just fix it. Um, but yeah, that's usually how I work. If I can plan something, I plan, plan it. And otherwise, I just work on it when I have the time. Yeah, I've been very comfortable. I post in IRC that I'm about to upgrade plugins, wait for 15 or 20 minutes to see if there are any objections, yeah. and then I just go ahead. 
Yeah, that that that's the best way because if nobody complains about that, um, yeah, just just upgrade the system. I mean, uh, it's way better to have every everything always up to date than just than just fear how to break things. So yeah. Um, next topic is uh, regarding the Packer image. So Tim Ja, which is not here today. So Tim Jacob work on Packer images for Seattle Jenkins Ohio. So right now we are just generating Ubuntu image. Um, the good thing is it's speed up the process uh, a lot uh, because we once once the Docker once the the virtual machine is started, it's already ready to to, to work. Um, we still have to we still have to to recontrol the process. Um, it seems like each time we change the, the image, we have to update the Seattle Jenkins that configuration, um, which is not really convenient. Um, basically, I, I enabled those images last Friday, something like that. So that's why we had issues over the weekend with Seattle Jenkins that um, Another change that I did uh, regarding Seattle Jenkins that was to update um, the credentials. So in the past, we had one user who had owner access to the Azure accounts. And so now I just changed that um, to have contributor access. So we can just manage resources, but we cannot access the resource themselves. And the next time uh, that I work on permission, I would just um, reduce, uh, so I'm sure that um, credentials configure and see other Jenkins that you only have access to specific things instead of ha having access to the uh, to the whole accounts. Um, but yeah, I, I did some work on the, the permission management and on the Azure accounts. And the other thing that I also did is I started working on groups. So the idea is to have so yeah, maybe I can let me see if I can share my screen with you. Um, stop recording, share. Bum, bum, bum. So uh, while you're doing that, Olivia, I was more concerned about the the making sure that we understood I understood what happened that caused it. So it's it sounds like you made a switch to Packer. The switch to Packer um, had positive results in that things start faster now, they start cleaner because we've got more initialization, initialization done in the, in the virtual machine and that's great. We were, there was a, a, um, an error in the Docker Compose installation, a mixing between docker.com and others. Do we have evidence that that's resolved the issue now or we're still in the process of switching to use the new images? So it's not, it's not, so the, the so, um, sorry. So the, the, the change that I did regarding the Packer images, the way CI the Jenkins.io was configured in the past, it was just each time we need a new virtual machine, we use a default Ubuntu image and run a script. And in that script, we install Docker, we install all the things that we needed, so Java, Java, extra. So we just have, uh, that script and no, um, that script is executed directly from the Packer image. So once we start, instead of uh, using the default Ubuntu image, we use the, the, the Packer uh, image generated uh, on Seattle Jenkins.io. Um, and so everything is up and running. So it does not, I mean, the Docker, the Docker Compose issue is, um, it may be related to the Packer because we are maybe not using the same uh, image. But yeah, it's not related to the work that I did um, last week. If I can share, I'm almost there. My computer is really slow. One person then can share. I can't share. Oh, sorry. Um, Can you see my screen? Yes. So basically what I did is I started, I created uh, at the moment two different groups, one for with Packer permission. Um, and so every person in the, that group can read the, the resource group that contained the Packer image. And I created a second group with for public communities. And the idea is if someone is in that group, uh, that person can also access the resource group that contained the communities cluster. Um, 
So this is something that I started working on last week. Um, I could not automate that yet. So it's really like uh, for specific use cases. And so the idea is if we need it, we can, we can invite more people in the account, but, uh, and so they only have access to specific resources. Um, that's something that I would like to see more uh, in action in the coming weeks, but I still need more testing to be sure that, um, I mean, it's still useful. Um, yeah, do you have any question regarding this? No, nope, that seems reasonable. Yeah, um, and so, yeah, sorry, yeah? So I had one quick question. So you mentioned that the, um, the initialization script has kind of been moved into the actual VM image. I was wondering, there's still stuff in the initialization script set up in ci.jenkins.io for yes. the agent. Does that need to be removed? So this, so this normally should be removed. Uh, it was just a workaround. So um, if you look at the script used by Packer, it installed a bunch of things and then removed the user Jenkins. And so what happened when uh, at the first iteration, um, we were not able to, to use those um, Packer images because we didn't have the right um, uh, permission. So basically the script that I configured last week was just to say, um, ensure that the Jenkins user is there and uh, just put the right permission. And nor but normally now it should be fixed. Um, but because okay. because because um, the Packer images is generated from Seattle Jenkins.io, if Seattle Jenkins.io cannot provision machines, then we cannot generate new Packer image. You see that? Gotcha. So that's Catch why. me too. Yeah, but uh, normally, normally, um, normally we should be able to remove this. It has been fixed last Friday. Okay, cool. Um, yep, let's continue. So regarding the Packer issues. So yeah, as I mentioned, regarding Packer uh, images, as I mentioned, it would be nice to have um, Windows image as well. Um, the main reason to this is because yeah, the, when when the middle Windows machine are started, it, it take quite a lot of time. Um, the thing is, if you have some time to look at it, it would be nice. I think yeah, just uh, if you look at the Ubuntu, if you look at the Ubuntu example, um, you should just be able to to insert the script that you are using and see the Jenkins that I So you should be yeah, that's that's what I started. To do. I should have a pull request later okay. uh, t today, hopefully that has the um, same setup as the current Windows 2019 okay. um, awesome. VM. Awesome. Um, so next topic, um, status report from Olivier. Oh, no, 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 don't, oh, wait, don't no, 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 the no, next no. one. Okay. I, I got to worry about that next one. So I just got an email message today. I assume you saw the same thing that effective tomorrow, the, the SSL certificate on accounts.jenkins.io is being revoked. Um, and that, so um, uh, I can check. The, the, the good thing is if the, the, if the certificate is not working, it will be automatically generated. So um, I'm not too concerned about that. I have to check if it's the right uh, certificate. The reason, I mean, the, so basically we are using a, a tool called Cert Manager to generate the certificates. And so each time you go on one of the websites running on Kubernetes, if we have a valid certificate, it does nothing. Otherwise it generates new certificates. Okay, right, and so I just confirmed, you don't need to check anything more. I just confirmed that the certificate on accounts.jenkins.io is issued Kubernetes Ingress Controller fake certificate expiring in 2021 so we are fine so we can ignore that thank you that's all uh, i needed yeah i just i just have to check if there are some uh, upgrade that we need to do with cert manager so manager cert manager is the tool to generate to request the certificates um that's the only thing that i had that i have to verify oh. okay uh where is that okay back to confirm not an issue um, Jenkins.io cert is from KDS, from Kubernetes, not uh, cert bot. Okay, uh, for me, status report from Olivier and others. Um, so those are just notes, in fact, sorry. Right. Uh, I, so I, yeah. the, every, everything else in, this, in the meeting notes are just notes I had taken while we were going. So I, th I think we covered all the, um, all, the, all the topics for today. 
So um, unless unless someone wants to bring something new in the discussion, I think we will just we can finish that. So, I'm still back to the Packer topic. I, uh, infra 2495, I think, is not quite yet resolved. So is the hope that we'll resolve it today with the the change to the to the to use the newer image? Um, yes, yes, that's oh. correct. Okay, so and this is not one that's critically dependent on Olivier. Alex, I, you you know I how already to do did this. It, yeah. Oh, yep. very good. Okay, great. Basically, the, the what you do if you have admin access on CI.genius.io, I don't know, but Which you I go do. and you look at the build for that um, Packer Images repository, and there is a timestamp that will be in there, and you need to go into the Azure VM Agents section okay. for the. I can, I, I can change. I, I would just okay. show you. I can. It will be easier. Um, so share screen this one. So basically, each time, so there is, so in my case, so you just go to the resource group. So just search for, uh, I think, Twitter. Uh, is the search working from, yes, sorry, it's here. So if you search Twitter, there is a resource group called Prod Packer Images. And inside you have uh, multiple images. And so basically, you just need to use the latest one, um, um, which is in this case. So there is a timestamp. So the, this one seems to be the latest one. And so you have an ID. So you just have to take the resource ID, and then you can go to um, ci.jenkins.io. Um, I will not log in now, but you just have to go to the um, cloud configuration, and then you can update the ID. So the next time the virtual machine is provisioned, it will use a new Packer image. So something that hap that may happen, if you know that one the one uh, virtual machine is totally broken. Um, you you can try to force delete. So that's something that I did last uh, weekend. So you go to virtual machines. You have to use the right resource groups. So um, either you look in the CI Jenkins that are your configuration for the right resource group. In this case, I know it. So I would just directly go to there. So select all um, agent three. So Agent three. So this is a, the the resource group used for the CI Jenkins that I/O virtual machines. And so you have a list of machines here. And as you can see, we are creating four right now. So it's in the status. Um, but if you know that you change the uh, the Packer image and you really want to use those Packer image, something that I do is I just look on CI Jenkins that I/O. And if I see nodes that are not used, I just delete those nodes um, from here. So on the Azure. So I'm sure that the next time a job needs a new virtual machine, it will provision a new one. So that's, that's something that I did over the weekend. So first, first update ci.jenkins.io with the right uh, resource ID, and then uh, ensure that you don't have a um, machine available to, and so delete all old machines, and then uh, ci.jenkins will create new machines. Um, does that answer your question? It does, thank you. Yep, awesome. Stop sharing. Um, so I will have to run. So if, um, yeah, I think we can continue the discussion in RSC. Thanks for your time and see you on RSC. Thanks.